We're here to talk about anime again. Hell yeah. Uh, we just finished watching uh, Chaika Coffin Princess, which was a surprisingly decent, like, what, like 23 episodes in an OVA? Uh, 22 in an OVA. Okay. Was it? I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure. It was she... 10, 13, and then the one. <sighs> Get off the little check. <laughs> um, yeah, so... Uh, 22 episodes in an OVA. Okay. Um, if you want to say 24 episodes because the two OVAs didn't really have much to do with each other. Yeah, they, they seem like just random two episodes, which is honestly what this had for strength like it's the character interactions and by placing them in sort of monster of the week sort of formulas where it's like let's take care of this bad guy and get this body part all right so i should explain <laughs> it's uh, dracula it's castlevania 2 it's castlevania it, it, it's just simon's quest we're out to collect the body parts of dracula and we're going to resurrect him we're going to kill him again uh, well, that's not what we're told at the end. We're told, hey, I just want to collect all the body parts so I can mourn him properly. Because, like, you can't just mourn the grapes. Yeah. Like, you need the rest of the body and not just the grapes. Yeah, and just bury him somewhere, because that'll go well. Um, also, Dracula's body parts are uh, filled with magic. Yes. High, uh, high, uh... Uh, quantities of magic yes making them very valuable yes which is why he was split between the heroes who killed him so yeah this this series like it's so castlevania that it it almost kind of hurts <laughs> and yet i'm totally down for it yeah it's um, castlevania with sniper rifles Fucking sick. I love magic sniper rifles. Like, that. that's just a really cool concept. But yeah, I guess this is one where I want to talk about characters a little bit because they, they fucking matter. So there's Toru, who's the main guy. He's what they call a saboteur. I don't know. They're, they're basically professional mercenaries. Yeah. They, um, they, they uh, excel in stealth. Sure. And setting traps. And turning red. That's just a clan thing. That's just because he was raised in a certain village that had mastered the ability to turn... get red tattoos. Cool. After saying a mantra that takes five hours to recite. Yeah. Um, Toru's basically... He, he's lazy? And... But that's just because he's... He, he needs purpose, and... He's been unemployed for five years since the war ended. Yeah. Um... And then there's his quote unquote sister, who her ba or like basically her only personality trait is that she wants Toru <laughs> real bad. And it's I'm I'm so thankful it's just played for laughs. It's not it's treated as a joke. Uh it doesn't get creepy. I don't know, man. Going, going on. Hey, if you die, I, I need your body to be in one piece so I can stuff it. I mean, I think that's actually really funny. I thought it was funny. <laughs> <laughs> just, I mean, like, every... I don't know. Just everything about the way that it's played is just funny to me. Like, I, I, I was glad I could laugh at it instead of being uncomfortable. Yeah. And, uh... The, uh... The second best character in the show... Chika, The white... Chika, gothic lolly who speaks in very simple typically one to two words carries a coffin as a backpack and inside said coffin is a sniper rifle she is just charming adorable innocent and naive and just just a lovable person in general she's very much the quote-unquote emoto subtype that's just like you just want to protect her but then she pulls out a fucking gun <laughs> and you go well uh, uh, you've got this one covered i'm gonna go hide behind a rock you've got sick ass magic i i think you got this it's just magic that takes five hours to cast it it, it gets improved over the over time but yeah um it's I, I i like her a lot um i i i wish she was 
easier to deal with in English. I just, I couldn't, <laughs> I couldn't deal with it. We were like two minutes in and I was just like, I can't, we have to turn this to Japanese. This is not working for me. Um, but, uh, and luckily the charm does still come through in Japanese. Oh, it's so adorable. I was cringing at the English, uh, but in Japanese I was just like, oh, this is the most adorable. She's, I just, I just want to <laughs> hug her. Um, pissed off that they didn't kiss, though. They teased that at the end of season one, and they didn't fucking do it. For the... No, it's fine. Don't worry about it. Made me grumpy. Anyway, uh, Tor I'm specifically talking about Toru and Chaika. They're obviously a thing. Um, and then we have the best fucking character <laughs> in this entire series. <laughs> the fucking dragon. Well, I mean, yeah. Frederica is amazing. She, when she's allowed to enter a scene and be who she is, she is the best. Oh, hey, you guys are having a fight to the death? Let me join. No, we're not fighting. We're going to run away. Oh, oh damn, damn it. it. <laughs> and then she just, like, picks him up. Like, just, like, lazily. It's just, like, fine. Just picks him up and pouts as she flies away. <laughs> Uh, she could turn into a cat, she could turn into a, a little girl, she could turn into an even smaller girl. She turns a into a chibi. <laughs> which has a squeaky voice in one of the weirdest, like, it's the hardest I've ever laughed at something that was honestly pretty graphic. <laughs> but she, like, bursts out of herself. And it's just like, oh, hey, I, I made this because I figured someone would try and stab me. Yeah. And the only reason why she's following them around is because she wants to kill Toru. She's like, she wants to fight him to the death. I want to fight the shit out of you. Look, and then what's sad though is that eventually he just kind of turns into like, you should make a pact with me and be be be. Look, mine. if you're not gonna let me kill you, just let me take a nibble out of your shoulder. I need a piece of you, and you can have a piece of me, and you can just be, you know, not be not be a shitty a... sabotage man you can be a shitty dragoon man who <laughs> doesn't even do the deed but anyway um yeah so i kind of don't necessarily want to run through the entire plot but yeah they're basically they're gathering dracula's body parts and... yeah they have to go coerce the eight heroes most of which don't really want to give up the body parts but some of them are just like yeah whatever just take it I love the ones that are so, uh, like, freaked out by Chaika. Yeah, there's, like, two of them. There's a man who's, like, one with his house. Yeah. And he's, like, the first guy. He's just like, nah, dog, that, that's a ghost! That's not real. We killed you. And, yeah. Uh, and then he gets tied up, and they just take it, and he's just like, well, shit. Yeah. And, and then... then hmm? Oh, then then there's the, uh, the guy who's just so depressed that he hires entertainers... He's, he's, well, he's, I guess not just press. He's just trying to forget. Yeah. So he's got entertainers, like, down the street. Yeah, and he just hands out money to ones that can make him laugh. Yeah. And, uh, and they get, um... And they get... I, I like that they get him to laugh by a sister demanding that Toru strip... And get into boiling water. See, they, 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 yeah, they set it up as like, oh, this man's immortal. What he does is he pretends to be a cock to rice and gets naked and just walks into boiling water while eating pasta through his nose. <laughs> and the guard's just like, wow, that's cool. Huh. Head on in. Yeah. And then, and then sister, what is her name? Akari. Yeah, okay, I knew it's her the name. Yeah, Akari takes it way too seriously, even though she made it up. She's like, oh, well, you gotta do it now. That's that's just what I want to see. I she holds him a knife point. I need to see you naked, and it's just like, oh my I god. I want to watch you eat pasta, and then, and then fucking <laughs> Chika comes running in like, I also want to see this. You eat pasta through your nose? That's amazing. <laughs> And he's just like, no, she lied. <laughs> just get us in here. This is why Chaika's like the second best character. She's just wonderful. Um, yeah, so... Oh, and in this entire thing, she's got a bed sheet with like a crudely drawn face on it. Oh, yeah, no, it's fucking great. Uh, but yeah, so... through Oh, yeah, and I guess we should talk about the red Chaika who... There's multiple Chaikas. Uh, yeah, that gets explained later, and it's... An explanation that happens very fast. Well, it gets fully explained very quickly, but it's very clear that there are more than one, and that most of the child, because if not all of them, are probably in some way fake. Um, and... 
Did we did we mention that Chica's the daughter of of Dracula? Quote unquote, yeah. She's stated to be the, each Chica thinks that she's the daughter of uh, Dracula, aka Arthur Gatz. Gatz, um, Gatz, Gatz. There's no T in it. It's just Gatz. But but it's the Z, so I don't know. I don't. Gaz, Gaz. Anyway, um. Yeah, there's a red Chico who uses the fucking best sword in the fucking show. It's, it's, a, it's a whip sword. It's a whip sword, and I am. A always, really long whip sword. It, like it's got some range. It goes the distance sometimes in ridiculous fashion. Um. But she never thinks to, like, throw it between bars. Anyway, uh, Red Chica's fucking sick. Uh, just, you know, she's not the Chica that's with them, so you don't see her as much. She's got the Sundere. She, she, she fills the Sundere role pretty, pretty neatly. Because she's got a thing for Toru, because I guess everyone wants Well, Toru. I mean, you, you look at him and you go, that man's unemployed. That's hot. <laughs> Yeah. And I've got the money. He doesn't need to be employed. That's hot. Damn. <laughs> he can be at home all the time. He makes traps. He <laughs> must be good at cleaning. Clearly. He's a house husband. Damn. Yeah, but, uh... And then she's got two got two people who follow her around, and mm-hmm. they don't really have much character aside from, hey, we follow Red Jika around. Yeah. There's a there's a there's a group that works that works with the government, um, Gillet Squad, uh, who. I think the weirdest part is um, the main guy gets like quote unquote murdered uh, at the end of season one. And of course, he uh, spoilers. He's totally alive. Um, and they set up this whole thing. It's like you're totally the type of person who has rage and hatred in your heart, and you long for war. And that doesn't go anywhere. Yeah, he kind of just gets his hand cut off, and he's just like, "Oh shit, I'm a good guy." <laughs> Fuck. He gets fucking Luke Skywalker, and it's great because it's so. I I it just. It just happens, and I'm just like, are we going to fix this? So so what happens is they get thrown into, uh, a- after he supposedly dies, he gets hired by one of the eight heroes. Yeah. And uh, two, the, two of the other members of his squad, one who's got a crush on him and one who is like a big man with a big sword, and that's most of his character. Pretty much. And so they, they're, they're in this tournament thrown by the eighth... Eighth hero. And uh, the, the tournament people were like, yo, you guys fucking cheated, so just go away into our death chamber. Uh-huh. And so they make the two fight. And the girl who's got a thing for him just takes the big man's sword and, like, cuts off his hand. Yeah, because he's about to kill, uh, what's his face? And just, uh, Nikolai's. Uh, he's about to kill Nikolai, and so VB. Uh, picks up the big sword and just slices his hand off and I went holy shit wow that happened and then yeah they make him drink some pond water after that and they're like <laughs> hey it's herbs it'll make you feel better we swear yeah um yeah so the, the, they, they're competing or they're they're trying to figure out what's going on and they're dealing with all the global politics that are going on because, like, half the people want to fight and half the people don't want to fight. And it's just... It's all sorts of fun. And then they get all the... They get all the... Okay. There are two major plot points I actually want to cover. The, the, they're actually the end of each season. So the end of season one I do want to cover because I feel like it needs to be talked about. Uh, mm-hmm. They succeeded in creating one of the most hateable villains on, <laughs> like, ever. He's basically a complete psychopath. Yeah, yeah, he's the, the son of, like, the fourth hero. And he murdered his... He murdered his whole family because he just wanted to cut them open. He wanted to see what kind of blood they had in him. He's he was one. an aspiring surgeon. Clearly. Except he was really shitty. And, like, 
he abducts women from the the, the, the towns in his in his region uh-huh. with his sky base. And he just, like, dissects them. And then, to make things worse, he just kind of shoves them into the walls. Yeah, because they can power the fucking Sky Fortress, which, oh my god, the Sky Fortress is... And the Sky Fortress has also got one of the pieces powering it, but, you know, like, the the real fucked up thing is just, he's killing people and putting them in the walls. Yeah, he mutilates all these women and puts them in as extra batteries, and, and he's just... He doesn't feel anything, and he's just disgusting, and he gets murdered, and probably one of the most satisfying... He just gets fucking impaled, and is just left to die. And I was like, yeah, yeah, that's that's what he deserves. Totally. Um, it's very satisfying... His death, and also we got to watch two Sky Fortresses just kind of rub <laughs> against each I, I was joking, I'm like, I just want to watch them like rub against each other. So, yeah, there's two <laughs> Sky Fortresses, one that the bad guys got, and then like one that the uh, the quote-unquote good guys have. Yeah. And the way they're animated is just, they just slide. Yeah. <laughs> like, I know you can't do much with it, but they just fucking slide like they're on a, on a little... Uh, on a wire kind of deal. Yeah. And so, yeah, they just kind of rub up on each other, and then they they rotate about 45 degrees, and then they just fall. Yeah, they fall in the water. It's, it's a good time. Uh, but, yeah. So that was a thing. Also, the Chica there, Blue Chica, um, she sucks. She had an epiphany at the beginning of the series, and she was told that she was a tool to collect body parts. Yep. And she's like, nah, dog, I ain't doing that. I'm gonna go help out this psychopath kid and his weird uncle. Okay, wait. I just remembered the thing that speaks to White Chica at the very beginning of the series. That's Blue Chica, actually. Oh, it is? At the beginning of the series. I'm pretty sure that's Blue Chica. What the fuck was speaking to her? That was the Kraken. Was it the Kraken? It was the Kraken. It didn't look like the Kraken. It was the Kraken. Oh my god, I was wondering, I was like, that didn't feel like it ever got resolved. So it was a Kraken, it talks, it tells the, the, it gives the backstory of what the Chikas are and what they're doing. Yeah, it was so fucking weird. And that's why Blue Chikas are like, yeah, I'm outie, I'm gonna go hang out with Psychopath Kid and the weird man who drugs people, cause he's fun. Yeah. Anyway, and now we gotta talk about when they resurrect, uh, Mr. Dracula. Oh boy, is it a scene. <laughs> yeah, because the black Chica, yes, there's another Chica, and also a whole Power Ranger set of Chicas. But anyway, uh, black Chica just has a mass of tentacles under her dress and just eats all the body parts and basically gives birth to a weird scrawny kid. And keep in mind, the Chicas are like teenagers. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And she gives birth to not a baby. Yeah, just... But, like, a teenager. A weird malnutrition teenager. Yeah. He's got, like, back spikes and everything. It's gross. Yeah, he looks like old-school Charmander. It's and then he just time. sits down and he grows into to middle-aged Dracula. Yeah, with the... Be- because why, why, why not? Well, because we need a... We had our child murder... In the last season, we gotta have we we gotta we, we didn't get good ratings for that, so we gotta make him an adult. And uh, yeah, and then Dracula goes, and now I I I sent up my castles into the heavens, and at, all at once I'm hit with the sudden realization that this show has jumped the shark <laughs> to fucking space satellites magic space satellites for creating the infinite Tsukiyomi and powering this magic man forever the f- yeah just to- we also kind of forgot to mention his uh, his sidearm oh yeah uh cuz so- there's a there's like a three episode arc where they go to uh, the fun little island and they had to go find his inheritance yeah and it's a vocaloid it's a vocal eye with elf ears, and um, she basically has. Um, okay, Chike, White Chika says she has personality. I, I would personally disagree with that. I'm pretty sure she's just a robot. Um, but, but that's important. 
Yes. It's very important that Chuck can say she has personality. It's very important. Uh, yeah, it's like, Jesus. Uh, but yeah, in, in that episode where they get her, she turns into a fucking siege cannon. Yeah. And just destroys this facility. And, uh, yeah. And the whole point of getting her was just to get her to the tournament where they were going to resurrect Dracula. Yeah, because, uh, what's-her-face is the, his staff, quote-unquote. So I mean, everyone needs, um, every wizard needs a staff. His just happens to be a siege cannon. Yeah. Some get sniper rifles, some get cars. He gets a siege cannon that looks like a Vocaloid. Yeah. Hediochromia. Yeah. Because, you know, why not? And anyway. Yeah. So he, he he's setting up his, uh, his satellite grid. And it, he's teleported, or he, he like gets on his magical elevator spell. Yeah. And just, like... It's like, I'm Audi, you guys take care of the trash. And, uh... So Toru makes a pact with Frederica, becomes a Dragoon Cavalier. Yeah, basically goes full Drakengard on us. Or she bites him, and then she offers him a hand. (laughs) Well, she offers him a claw, which then turns into a, like... A forearm. Yeah, like a, like a small one, too. I was kind of weirded out by that. And she's like, look, you, you gotta eat a little bit of it. Uh, yeah, or otherwise you, gotta, you gotta get a little bit of me in you, otherwise you're gonna die. Yeah, you're gonna fucking die. And he turns into a dragoon, which is honestly kind of sick. And, or a dragon, yeah, dragoon cavalier, which I think is awesome. Dragoons are basically just armored dragons. They're awesome. Is that what D&D says? No. Okay. But that's what they are in this universe. Um, but yeah, so, at this, what's disappointing is that once this pact is made, Frederica doesn't do a damn thing. No, she doesn't even say anything. It's really disappointing. She does get super, super chuffy, though. Like, <laughs> god damn. She's a fucking barrel in most of those shots, and I'm just like, Jesus! Yeah, a barrel with little twig legs. Just, <laughs> like, proportions are all fucked up. Um, but yeah, so he goes to fight Drackles. And leaves uh, his Chica behind. Well, okay, so she's like, uh, take me with you. And he's like, yeah, okay, whatever. And then he just drops her off on a building and is like, yeah. stay here. Yeah, I'm going to go. I ain't going to do this myself. I'm going to go kill your dad. Yep. And so like, he's just up there shoot, having Frederica shoot at this barrier that's immovable. Yep. And, and Dracula's like, man... I guess it's commendable. Let him in. Yeah. Let him in. Let's we'll see what he got. Yeah. Uh, I just realized there's a plot hole that's coming up. Uh, so he goes in and he has to fight his old master who has been a recurring problem since like the last couple episodes. Yeah, and he's working for the eighth, uh, eighth hero. Also Dracula. Yeah. yeah. And uh, he gets fucking schooled. It's great. Fucking magic. Magic, uh, ex- extending daggers. And, uh, yeah, and then he goes to confront Drackles, and Drackles is like, join me, and we can do a thing. You love war. I love war. It'll be a great time. I can be your papa. And, and Toru's like, fuck off. And so he, Drackles immediately slices up his dragon. And, Dragoon, I'm sorry. And, uh, just, like, lifts Toru into the air and breaks him and then stabs him with a bunch of spears and goes, you know, you can still join me. And he's like, nobody's listening, old man. Blah, blah, blah. And he plugs his ears. And, uh, he's like, all right, well, that was fun. And then, and and then he opens the windows for some reason and... Well, you know, he just wants... He's going to shoot him with a super laser. He wants the blood to go outside the windows and not inside, because inside it's like a science lab, you know? It's like all white yeah. and uh, pristine. He doesn't want any blood on that. Clearly. And he's about to blast him, and then 
Chika fires a defensive spell, which puts him in a bubble, and somehow gets through the magical shield that they couldn't penetrate? Well, I, I, Can we explain? Like, I'm, I'm thinking he turned it off. Why? Because he's opening the, the shutters. But she was shooting at it the entire time! Look, he wasn't counting her shots. Oh my that was God. the last shot. He didn't count for that one. Anyway... He gets saved because of the bubble. Yeah, he just kind of bounces out. Yeah, it was fucking great. And uh, so Draggles grabs his uh, his staff, the Vocaloid, and is like, all right, we're going to take this number 357 or whatever. We're going to take her out. And uh, thank God White Chica told uh, the, the gun girl Vocaloid that she had personality because... Uh, when Vocaloid sees who she's targeting, she just goes, no. <laughs> she becomes self-aware. <laughs> and just goes, I'm out, see ya. And uh, attaches to Chika and is like, all right, well, load psychofuel. And she's like, I don't got any. Out of bullets. And he's like, well, shall we use memories instead? Let's do it. And goes, all right, time for the greatest command mail you've ever seen. And Dracos is like, you know, five shields is probably enough. And then he's just fucking... Gone. No, just incinerated. All of this happens in, like, the last half of the episode. The last episode moves fucking fast. Yeah, yeah. Um, And and so they murder... Oh, I forgot one of the best scenes, though, is when the guys are like, they're getting attacked from everywhere. Do we fight? No, we can't risk fighting right now uh we don't know his intentions or whatever and then we immediately cut to the castle as beams are just being fired in random directions yeah, like fuck beam 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 oh, beam beam one of the best scenes like the the best like immediate cuts but anyway they murder drackles they shut down all the space uh satellites and uh the yeah. government uh confiscates the, the the Vocaloid. Which is actually kind of sad. And they just kind of put some chains on and they say, put that in the back, don't tell anybody about it. Yeah. And, uh... And Chica, the the red and white Chica now live together with, uh... a car... I don't think the red Chica lives there. I think she just visits. Anyway, uh... uh it was Kane and Toru... Akari. Kari, damn it! Kari, Taru, and, uh, and White Chica all live together, just out in the middle. Well, not really in the middle of nowhere. It's just on a cliff. Yeah. And uh, yeah, and I, I guess Taru's getting helping Chica to sort of remember him, or just recover in general. It's it's not. Clear. It's like fifty first dates or something like that. Sure. Anyway, uh, Frederica's still there, of course. Still. Yeah, she I think chases she was in butterflies. Cat, I think she was in cat form or something. Um, and he, Akari's writing a, uh, a novel on a brother and sisters forbidden love. Yeah, and like she she holds up like this fucking Bible sized <laughs> amount of pages, and, and Red Shike is like, "Yo, is that finished?" And she's like, "Nope, this is the prologue." Uh huh. It's a good time. Yeah. And then there was the OVA, which was basically just two episodes. It was just some bullshit. It was it was a cross dressing episode where they <laughs> blow up a theater. Yeah. And they're just like, ah, eh, well. And then there was an episode where everybody got naked and they went through the jungle and then they blew up a temple and they were like, yeah, oh well. Yeah, whatever. It was it was both ending as like, yeah, whatever. It was just and then it explodes even more. It was just <laughs> fucking hilarious. Um, but yeah, honestly, I would say this show's strength was, I mean, the, 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 the body part of the week sort of, uh, formula to this was interesting to an extent, but I really feel like season two just wasn't as good. Season two really got hit with that budget cut, where it's like, "Hey, look, just get it over with. You don't have the, we don't have the money anymore. Just, just hurry it up. Yeah, just finish it." And we set up a whole lot of lore, just kind of like rapid fire that shit out, so we can just. And then we had to get to exposition cracking. We just <laughs> dropped like three bombshells. 
and even explained what magic was, which was explained in like one sentence. And magic it was just is memories. Like, okay, bye. Ma- well, magic is like it re- it writes reality. It t- turns willpower into reality, and it's like wow, you just okay. Also, humans bad. They're bad at it. They don't. They they can't do it, and that explains why. Um, why Drackles is fusing himself with monsters to be able to cast magic without a gun. Uh, but yeah, no, just... It it really did well in the first season with, like, the political intrigue and the, the goofy adventures. And then it just had to rush in the second season. And it was just unfortunate because it was decent. Well, I liked it. Yeah. I liked it enough to watch it twice. It's not that big of an investment. It's 22 episodes. That's not even a full season, usually. What are you so, talking about? That's two seasons. Mm, some of the like, seasons Man, Wrestle Anime episodes. was only like 12. True. And that was a, that was a whole series. Yeah. And uh, Misfit was also, what, 12? Yeah, that was the whole series. That, that's two seasons, man. Eh, you know, it's, still, it's still almost two seasons. It's still not that bad, but uh, yeah, I'd I'd say give it give it a go. It's if you can't stand it in English, watch it in Japanese. I mean, it, it, whatever your preference is. Uh, I I've been I've been told that the English dub is like I. The only problem I had with the English dub was, was the main character. Yeah. <laughs> And then they're like, what if we introduce the main character multiple times? Oh my god, yeah. But, um, it's a good time. It's, it's decent. It's not incredible. Uh, but, I, I had a good time. Honestly, I, I'm almost sad we didn't talk about the wrestling anime. I mean, we can re- we can re- re- rewatch it, and then... No, I'm not rewatching it. I've seen it twice now. <laughs> yeah, it, it and it's so far behind us that it would be hard to give it a fair fair shake. So, um, but yeah, uh, thumbs um, up. It was good. I had a good time, especially when Dracula summons satellites. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Anyway, all right. We'll see you. Next time. Not even going to give him a preview of what we're watching? Okay, fine. (laughs) See you later.